angles and their measures. Now, let's define first angles. Angles are formed by two rays sharing a common endpoint, wherein the common endpoint is called the vertex of the angle. Angles are measured by the protractor. The unit of measuring an angle is the degree. In angle TVL, two rays are sharing a common endpoint V. In this figure, in figure A, as you can see, ray VL is our initial side, while the other ray, which is ray TV, is the terminal side. We can also call this angle as angle alpha because we usually denote angles using lowercase Greek letters as alpha, beta, gamma, and theta. Angles in counterclockwise where angle A is positive looks like this, wherein you start with the initial side pointing to the terminal side of your angles. Angles in clockwise, in this case, angle beta is negative. And lastly, in this angle, gamma, our angle is positive since it turns counterclockwise. In the figure set to right, we may consider the vertex V to be the origin of the rectangular coordinate system and let the, and let the initial side of the angle lie on the positive side of the x-axis, as shown in figure B. An angle in this position is said to be in the standard position. Take note that the initial side of the angle is the stationary ray as it should be lying on the positive side of the x-axis, while the terminal side is the rotating ray which allows us to construct a variety of angles. Aside from that, the angle is said to be positive if it is rotating counterclockwise, and the angle is said to be negative if it is rotating clockwise. Now let's have some examples. Angles in standard positions. Example number two. Draw an angle with a given measure in standard position. Then, determine in which quadrant the terminal side lies. Example A. We have here a negative 45 degrees angle. Initial side on the positive side of the x-axis. Terminal side on quadrant 4. Then, the angle rotates clockwise since our angle is a negative angle. Example B, a 270 degrees angle. Initial side still on the positive side of the x-axis while the terminal side is on the negative side of the y-axis. Thus, the terminal side of the angle is on the y-axis. Aside from that, since it is a positive angle, it rotates counterclockwise. Next is a 405 degrees angle. The terminal side is on the quadrant 1 while the initial side still lies on the positive side of the x-axis. While it is rotating counterclockwise since it is a positive angle. Next is the quadrantal angle. Quadrantal angles are angles in standard position and its terminal side lies on the x-axis or y-axis. Quadrantal angles includes a 0 degrees angle, a positive or negative 90 degrees, 
a positive or negative 180 degrees, a positive or negative 270 degrees, a positive or negative 360 degrees, and etc. Next is the coterminal angles. Coterminal angles are angles in standard position with the initial side on the positive side on the x-axis that have a common terminal side with a given angle. Now let's have some example. Find the smallest positive coterminal angle of the given angles. Letter A, a negative 45 degrees angle in the standard position that would be the given. Now in finding the coterminal angle in this figure, so we need to look for the smallest positive coterminal angle. So we have here a negative 45 degrees plus 360 degrees that is equivalent to 315 degrees. So its smallest positive coterminal angle is a 315 degrees. So as you can see in this figure with the color red, our smallest positive coterminal angle is 315 degrees. Next, letter B is a 270 degrees. In this case, 270 degrees plus 360 degrees is equal to 630 degrees. In this case, 630 degrees is the smallest positive coterminal angle of 270 degrees. Lastly, a 405 degrees. The smallest positive coterminal angle of 405 degrees is a 45 degrees. I subtract 360 to 405 because if we add 360 to 405, it will not be the smallest positive angle. It would be the next positive angle that is coterminal to 405 degrees. So we subtract 360 since we're looking for the smallest positive coterminal angle. While on A and B, we added 360 to find the next smallest positive coterminal angle. Next, example 4. This time, we are looking for the largest negative co-terminal angle of the given angles. Here A, a negative 45 degrees. This is already a negative value, so we need to look for the next negative co-terminal angle. So, that would be negative 45 degrees minus 360 degrees. That is equivalent to a negative 405 degrees. So, the largest negative co-terminal angle of negative 45 degrees is negative 405 degrees. Letter B, at 270 degrees. The answer is negative 90 degrees. The largest negative coterminal angle of 270 degrees is negative 90 degrees. Since we're looking for the largest negative coterminal angle of 270 degrees, so we need to subtract 360 to find the next negative number, and that is negative 90. Lastly, a 405 degrees. Subtracting 405 with twice of the 360, that would be negative 315 degrees or 315 degrees. 405 minus twice of 360, twice because the first 360 deduction is still a positive number, but we are looking for the negative. So we need to subtract another 360 to find the next or to find the largest negative coterminal angle. And that gives us a negative 315 degrees. Lastly, we have the reference angles. Reference angle is the angle that the given angle makes with the x-axis. Regardless of where the angle ends, 
that is the regardless of the location of the terminal side of the angle, the reference angle measures the closest distance of that terminal side to the x-axis. In short, the measurement of this reference angle is less than 90 degrees. To solve for the reference angle, if the given angle is 0 degrees to 90 degrees, that is already the reference angle. But if the given angle is 91 degrees to 180 degrees, reference angle is equal to 180 degrees minus the given angle. If the given angle is 181 degrees to 270 degrees, reference angle is equal to the given angle minus 180 degrees. And lastly, if the given angle is 271 degrees to 360 degrees, the reference angle is equal to 360 degrees minus the given angle. In this figure, quadrant 1, as you can see, the given angle and the reference angle are just the same. In quadrant 2, in this angle, the reference angle is close to the x-axis. Quadrant 3, and then quadrant 4. Example number 5. Determine the reference angle of the following angles. Letter A, 120 degrees. Reference angle equals 180 degrees minus the given angle. Since our given angle is 120 degrees, subtracting 120 degrees to 180 degrees, our reference angle is 60 degrees. Next, letter B, 210 degrees. Reference angle is equal to the given angle minus 180 degrees, so 210 degrees minus 180 degrees, our reference angle is 30 degrees. And lastly, 400 degrees. Our reference angle equals given angle minus 360 degrees, since it's 400 degrees minus 360 degrees, our reference angle is 40 degrees.